G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now as you can see the bounty is really coming along now. I've pretty well got that top section all planked in and I will show you in this video how to use a simple trek using toothpicks to actually pin all your planks in which makes it so much easier for sanding it all to shape later. And I'm also going to show you how to basically measure out the tapers. Work out how you're going to taper those lower planks. It's not as hard as you think it might be. So don't be scared about this. It's actually very enjoyable to do. I found planking quite therapeutic. I love it. And I hope you will too once you've watched my video and picked up the easy tips that I'm going to share with you. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Roll the music. <laughs> nearly finished the planking here of the um, pretty well the ones that we don't taper so this is the first section because of course if you've watched the previous videos you know there are three sections and for this um, this ship there's about 24 planks 23 24 planks so each section is about eight planks so I'll have like over here I'll have eight planks that basically don't get tapered they just go on pretty nice and straight and um, after that, there's two sections, section down to the middle of the turn, and then from the middle of the turn down to the keel line, and uh, those sections we deal with independently. So, let's get started on this. I've only got two more planks to go, and then I've basically finished this um, whole first section. Now, the previous video, the planks, and there'll be some photos here, the planks were all put on and they were wet and they were bent and um, they were pinned in place. Then they, once they're dry, I just pull them off. I find this is the easiest method. Pull them off because they're already dry, they're bent, they're ready, they're shaped. And um, I make sure on, there it is, I make sure on the back side, I mark each of the planks with an arrow pointing to the front, to the bow. So I know which way around they go, and also which number. So I've got seven and eight here. So this one, seven, is going to be the next plank to go on. Now those have been drying overnight, ever since my um, my little incident with the hot planking tool, and I managed to, um, to burn my finger and thumb, because I was basically using the hot planking tool just to bend a few of these into shape, and, um, and slipped out of my hand. And absentmindedly went with the left hand to grab it before it fell to the floor. Of course you don't grab a hot burny thing <laughs> anyhow oh well goodness me I think I might wear an asbestos glove when I'm doing this next time all right so um my little um my little clamps can come off now some people were asking about how to make those again uh, it was in one of the marina balcony videos but yeah it's not quite in this series for the constructor so I'll do that now I'll just do a very quick how to do these this is how to make those little clips that hold my planks in place. You need these foldback clips, and I'm using the 25mm ones here, which are the smallest I think you can get, which is handy for a scale like this to try and get inside the ribs. You can get larger ones, and it's worth getting a few different sizes because there's lots of applications for these clips. Now, you're going to sacrifice one. So one of these, you basically will rip the arms off, okay? So there we go, it's armless. <laughs> the other two we now make into our little clips. What you do is you take the arm that's fallen off, or you've taken off, and you put it inside. And there you go, it will pop into place. There we go, Ooh, still suffering a bit from my, um, my burn injuries. That was a lot of fun. So that basically is it. It just clicks in and it pretty well holds in place because it's um, miraculously the exact length that it needs to be. How's that? Okay, so now that you're fully, fully educated <laughs> on how to make these little foldy things, it's not hard, is it? It's really not hard. Okay, what we'll do is we'll move on here. We'll just tidy this up a bit. These, um, these toothpicks, they can all be removed now. I have great joy in letting those ping all over the hobby room. Watch out, best cat. Oh, they'll... I'll get vacuumed up later. A little robot vacuum will find those. Now we're not worried they are a different colour to the planks 
because basically this all gets covered up. So this is just a method for doing this. And anyhow, we do the top layer, we shouldn't need these. If we do need to pin, we'll put in some um, spikes, the same colour as the wood that's there. You, you could probably hardly see there's about two or three spikes I put in just to hold everything in place to get that going. I did the top layer. Maybe I'll do it without this time because I got a little bit better at doing uh, doing that layer. So um, we shall see. We shall see. All right. So plank number seven. That's plank eight. This is why it's good to number them. Plank number seven is going to go in here. That fits nicely. It takes very little effort to bend it and to fit it to shape. Now you'll also notice with these last two planks, I am now instead of planking all the way to the end of the stern. And that's so that it's easier because otherwise we've got some very complex curves here and they're hard to do with the thicker planks. And the trick that I'm doing, if you haven't seen the previous videos, is we're doing the relatively easy areas that require minimal bending with the thick planks and then we're going to chock in. So I'm still yet to do the bow, but we can't do that till after I've got the whole run, until this is done. But the stern has been done and we can match up butt up to that now. And if you don't know how I did all that, You'll have to have a look in the previous videos. I'll explain it. All right, so to get this on here isn't that hard. We don't need to wet it. We don't need to do much at all. We just basically do a little dry fit there. So, yep, quite happy with that. We need to get our glue. I'm using PVA white wood glue. That's all I use. I'm not using super glue. I'm not doing anything like that. And I'll only need. Put this on basically the ribs. I could run all along the ledge there, but there's you know along here, but there's really no need. I did have to do that with this top run because as you can see, there aren't any of my little toothpick spikes in the top there. Alright? They are at the stern, but not from here on. Because from there on, that silly plank is proud. It sticks up. So there's really no way to pin it. You can't pin it. So the only way to do it was, I think some photos here, was to clamp it and glue edge to edge. And it was a bit tricky, but um, I accomplished it. Now the good thing about the white wood glue is you can uh, remove it with water. So if you make a gaff like I've just done then, and you've got bloody glue everywhere, you can do that. There we go, just comes off. A little bit of water, or spitters in this case. All right, so number seven plank is going to sit nicely here. Now, I'm going to line up my previous pinholes and I find it's best to start in the middle put these little clamps on okay so just basically clamp it up now you've got all this bendiness Harry oh, it's gonna be terrible won't you know it won't it'll be fine we'll just keep bending the plank and clipping it and it's already got the bend in it it just kind of springs out a little bit because it's let free and right at the end here, it might need a pin just to hold it in place, just to remind it who's boss here. And you'll probably find you've got a hole anyway from last time, although there's often a bit of um, plank creepage. Right, when they were wet, they will creep out a bit. And I'll demonstrate, once I get these planks on, I'll demonstrate that. I'll show you how much creepage there is. So. following it along. And the good thing about these little clips with the tops on, they're doing two things. They're holding the plank down against the former, you know, against the uh, the frame, and then they're also pushing it up as hard as you can. And they, I mean, you could probably just glue it and leave those in. But so that this sits correctly and there's no, no movement at all, I will drill and I will pin. So this one here, we'll start there because we're butting up against this and I really want that to fit exactly to there. I will need my pin vise. Now this is going to be different to when I did the holes, which were for the, um, when we were putting in just the pins. 
because they're a lot narrower. The toothpicks are much fatter, so we do need a fatter, a much fatter, um, well, wider diameter. I've got some hoons in the neighborhood today. So holding that up there, drilling this in, I'm going at a bit of an angle in through my plank. Now you could you could put a, uh, a pilot hole. Well, I usually use this little fella to basically prick it, but I know basically that's where that's going to go. So that's like that, and then I'll need my toothpick. Now you don't need much of the toothpicks, so what we're going to do is we'll cut two thirds of that off, and then we can. Once the toothpick starts to disintegrate, you know that basically you've gone as far as you can. Okay, now that's going to require a bit more convincing. Okay, okay, so we've got that one anchored and locked in place. So now it's just a simple matter of um, working your way along. re-drilling out the holes that you had previously because they may have drifted, they may have moved. When the planks were wet they were probably pushing down a lot further, there was more drift. Now the planks are dry they tend to shunt up and get a bit tighter. And you can measure this effect just after you've basically put the planks on. If you can accurately measure it you'll find it's one distance and yet when you um, when you do them dry you get a different measurement. So we're not using much of the toothpick at all. And you know when it's done because either it snaps off, which means that's in, or, or you get this change in note. Okay. So moving right along, here we'll need one. Remember we only put our pins in every second one. What I did on the um, the other side is I, I actually put all the new holes in on the alternate ones like this where there hadn't been a hole just to make sure there wasn't we weren't getting any drift or push from the previous holes in case they were slightly out but really the distances are so tiny and the fact you have to re-drill the hole slightly wider I found it was just just as easy to start at one end and move to the other. It is best not to start in the middle and go out at the ends unless you're absolutely sure it's going to sit where you want it to. It's best to start at a known end like that and work your way along. So we can also just pinch a bit off there. So there we go, it's as easy as that. So that run done so there you go now with your clips um, if you if you basically once it starts curving it's best not to put them on the curve what you want to do is work out what's flat for the plank and do that so even if they sit up a bit proud it doesn't matter basically you want that you're trying to encourage that plank to be flat so that's how, how you got now that should be good that should be good okay let's um Let's do some measurements and um, we'll see how much it has drifted. Now the blanks have been using they're six millimeters and they measure out pretty well to that. Sometimes I get a 5.9 whoops there we go and sometimes it goes to 6.1 but generally they're a six mil on average. So you would expect if we've done eight planks there six millimeters it should be 48 mils. Yeah. Forty-nine, and that's not uncommon over you know eight to ten planks to have a millimeter of creepage. Now this occurs sometimes due to camber. And we've got a little bit of camber here because we've got a little bit, not much of a curve. It's pretty flat, 
At least it was maybe until our last couple of planks. And you'll notice with the last couple of planks, we're starting to get this, this effect, this clinker effect. Okay, before then they were sitting pretty flush. But the last couple look slightly raised on the top edge because they're going across. Now, I probably could have put a bevel there and that would have solved the problem if I basically beveled them underneath. If I'd taken a little bit out underneath and beveled the edge, then they would have fit a bit more snug. But I've got two millimetres here that I can sand with, so I can sand that off. That's not a problem. I'll get away with that. But from here on, especially with this big curve, I'm going to need to think about beveling. And you don't need to take much off. But if you bevel your planks through here, you can stop that, um, that creepage from getting very, very big. Because, you know, if you um, I actually did the calculation and I think if I didn't put any beveling at all on the planks all the way through this curve, I could get up to half a mil, sorry, five mil, <laughs> nearly the size of plank. So five millimetres, I could be out because it'll creep that much. Because really here it's only been creeping for the last couple and that's given me another, you know, another millimetre. So... If I'm going to creep all the way through there, I can easily get 5 more creepage, which means I lose a plank. And then that makes it harder to work out calculations to do your tapering, which is what we're going to do now. Now, previously I estimated we have two more sections of 8. So again, we would expect another 48mm and 48mm. That's 96mm. Well, we'll measure the two middle ribs because they're usually the biggest and they're usually consistent. So we have got 92. So not quite as much as we thought. 92. So we're a plank shorter. That's not too bad. I think that's actually pretty well what happened on the other side. So we will probably need seven planks and eight planks. And what I do to get around this is I'll put in the garboard plank first. The garboard plank runs along the bottom. Now I explained this in the marina balcony video, but I'll show you here. And this plank will run all the way from the tip of the rudder, or where the rudder attaches, and it'll run all the way to here. But it won't bend up. What it does is it runs straight. So the garboard plank will run straight along here and then we will do a reverse tapering. Normally you taper the top of the planks, right? When you're doing your tapering, you taper top because the planks tend to, when you put them on, they tend to bend up on the curve, right? So they sit nicely. You take a little bit off the top as much as you need and that lets it sit up against I have shown all this in the marina balcony, the one that says walk the plank. I went into all this theory, but it's easy to see. So if this actually was tapering, see how it would actually go up. It goes up and over there. So if I bring it down, it goes up and over. So what you do is you don't chop it off the bottom of that one. No, 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 no. You always taper off the top, except your garbage plank, which is a bit different because that basically doesn't get tapered. It goes on 100% the size. And then as it runs through at the bottom here, we just cut it to the profile of the curve. So the garboard plank does an unusual curve here, where it's not actually like curving up or need tapering, but it starts level, starts flat, and then turns 90 degrees. It's probably easy to see side on. So if you're looking side on, you'll see here the planks lay that way. I like the Harry Denny is. So here the planks are basically laying that way. Okay, so that plank is laying nice and flat. Okay. But then progressively it starts to turn. It starts to turn, turn, and when it gets to the rudder, it is straight up and down. So it's got a 90 degree turn. Which is annoying. So, I mean, you don't need tapering and you don't need bending when you've got this. Now, this is a really thin one. This is going to be the second layer of planking, and these are much easier to work with. So, we can put this on here and we can see how that would be. 
So, yeah, it bends nicely when it's that thin. These are so easy to put on. This is why we do the first layer thick to get the shape right. We can sand it out, we can bend it, do everything. And then we go to the second layer, we use these beautiful thin planks and they just go on no problems at all. Hardly need any bending because they just basically conform to shape. So easy. So, yeah, we will need to run this all the way along there. And it'll run right up to the end. Most of it will get sanded off. Now, this is the strangest part is we'll, we'll run this plank um, up to the end here. We'll need to chisel out a little hole for it. And then when we sand all this to get the shape, because we really want, oops, we really want to get a point here. We want to have the planks coming up to a point. So you notice here, you hardly see any thickness from the garboard. It's pretty well been sanded at the point of the keel to nothing. And that's what you want, so that basically when we put a rudder on, it will be the right thickness. And some people don't do this, they forget that, and they basically plank, 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 and they end up this section here, three planks wide. Right, so we have the width of the keel and the width of the thick planks. So you'll probably end up with, you know, um, three sixes, nearly 20 millimeters. Okay, you'll end up with this big thicking, and then you go to put your rudder on, and <laughs> it's okay, but it um, it's problematic, because that's not going to look... Uh, the way a ship would. If you don't care, that's fine, but um, I do, so I want to get that right. So with this garboard plank in, the remaining part, we had 92, so we'll take away 6, that'll leave us with 86. So if we divide that into 2 for our two sections, that'll be 43 each. Now, 7 6mm planks will be 42. We could probably have a millimetre of creepage easily, as we saw, right? Even if we do the beveling, we'll probably still get a little bit of creepage. So it is not unreasonable to think we'll get seven planks and seven planks. So that works out nicely. So once we've got the garboard in, we can work in a section of seven and a section of seven. Now, we can calculate all that now, actually, um, by laying this plank in position. And the garboard plank sits, they don't sit over the top of your keel, right? You have to leave this keel space because you've got to put, this is actually a false keel here, you're going to have an actual keel that glues on here afterwards. And it runs through and there'll be a stem that goes at the front here and you're going to have your rudder here. So all that's got to be added later. We have to leave room for that. So that's why we basically try to get this end part here to the width and we make sure at the front of the bow here, we leave the width of our stem. It'll be slightly wider than the plank. So this works out at twice the thickness of our planks, our thick ones. So that's basically, yep, yeah, that's, that's, that's about right. So that's what we need to allow for. All right, so we can work out how our, um, our garboard's going to be. We can simply just mark some points. See how we go. Probably need a sharper pencil than this. And you'll notice here it starts to actually curve up. So you've got to take all this into account. Now, interestingly, when the curve is this way, or when the curve is that way, you will not need to do any beveling at all. Because basically, you um, the, the ends of the planks will be touching. You can, if you like, you could bevel them and then they'll look thinner. And I don't like that look, if you get what I mean. Um, they would basically have to be cut like that, so they bevel in, so they'll be thinner on the top and fatter on the bottom to go around there. But it um, doesn't really suit what I'm trying to do, so we don't worry, won't worry about that. You can bevel or not bevel, it's up to you. You just remember you'll get creepage. So our garboard here doesn't sit like that. It's going to sit straight across, so you can take, take it from there it's going to sit straight all the way through there. So our garboard will actually pretty well peter out at that point. Yep, that'll be. So basically, yeah, there's the that curve there will be the, the taper or the end that we put the garboard. Alright, so with these areas marked, and we will allow a millimetre for inaccuracy. Now it's probably easy to do this with the garboard actually in, but I'm just trying to illustrate this so that we don't chew up so much time in the video of me gluing things. But um, 
We'll now measure it down to where the gold is and allow a bit. So that one's 85. We were hoping for 86. Well, actually, 42 and 42 is 84. And that one is... Poor old measuring tape's going to be tatty. That one's measuring 86, 87. So yes, we will definitely get uh, two lots of seven in there and allowing for a little bit of um, creepage. And they, they probably need a little bit of fettling as we go through, but that can be done. All right, next thing we need to do to work out the tapering, because that's what this is all about, is we need to, and this was all shown in the Marina Balcony video, we'll need to put on this plank, it's a thin one, but it allows to show, and we'll need to see how it bends up, because even though we've got an even amount here, and there'll be seven and seven, okay, and they won't need to be tapered. As it goes out, the tapering changes. Now, it will be consistent for each region. So our two little regions are seven millimeters. So we'll do that. So that's 86. So at 43, I'm going to make a mark. Okay, so 43 is there. And then here, this one will go 43 as well. 43. Alright, so 43 and 43, that will need to be pinned so we can see how these planks bend. Okay, so 43 and 43. Now we're allowing 42 plus a little bit of creepage. Okay, so incorrectly come down a bit there we go all right so that should be exactly the 42 43 that we need to get seven planks in but they're going to get thinner and this is what happens I'm using this thin plank because it's easier to get the bend to the hull and as you see as it goes further forward see how it curls up this is what I was trying to say the planks will try and curl up and this is this is their natural position so when you're bending them you're going to need to bend a little bit of that curl out but you can't get it all out that's why you taper and anyhow they'll get all crammed at the end here. it's like trying to shove too many big fat teeth in a small jaw which is my problem so its natural curve is to there so I will mark that and there and there, so that's given me taper points. And over here, its natural curve is there. Again, we'll allow for millimeters in accuracy. There. So at the stern here, although there will be some tapering in the the middle section here, right? This section of seven planks, they will need to be tapered so they fit. In the lower part, it'll actually be wider. And we'll have a look at that now and I'll explain what's going on. So we've got all our pencil marks, right? We'll remove all our clips. And what we do is we'll build up a table now. But we'll just we'll just have a look first. So we know those two are 40, 43. We'll call them 43. So that's basically seven of our six millimeter planks and a millimeter for, for basically movement for creepage. Now I've only got 41 here. Okay, 41. Hmm. And this one here, I've got 39. And this one here, 28. Okay, so you can never go less than half the width of the plank in tapering. So if you've got a 6mm plank, the minimum you taper it to is 3. Otherwise, you need to start doing some other tricks. So at 3mm, we couldn't go any less than, well, if it's 43 for... You're basically your seven planks at the full width, right? You're going to need three and a half planks, or just half 43, 22 and a half, 22 and a half. 28 is okay, they're going to be get, getting quite thin, but that will they will taper to 28. And then at the stern here, again, we'll measure everything off. So we have mm, 34. Gee, that's a big jump, isn't it? From there to there, it really tapers right down. I'll just double check that. Oh no, I was looking at There's a dirty mark on the thing, sorry. 38, that sounds better. I thought, gee, that's a heck of a taper. Hit 38. <laughs> Goodness me. 
38, 33, 30, and about a 27. Okay, so I'll write all those numbers down across our table and I'll show you that shortly. But already we're down to 27 here. That's okay because remember our minimum tapering for a 6mm plank would get us down to 22. So that's okay. If you notice that your, your, your section you're going to try and cram it in, and that will happen when we go all the way up here, is less, then you're going to have to start dropping planks because you can't, it's advisable not to go any less than half the width of the plank. All right, now a funny thing happens at the, the lower section because sure we can reduce these so these little planks here are only going to be basically three and a half millimeters wide taper two over here the same and then they'll gradually go four five six six five four three ish okay and we'll work all that out shortly but right here at the stern this section here up to our garboard we've now got 48. Oh dear, that's more. So we had 40, 42, 43 is what we were basically looking at. But now we've got 48 because of the way this curves. This curves differently. Completely different to here, which is bowing out. Okay, This here is just a single curve bowing out. Here's a complex curve that goes out and it comes in and it's actually longer because it's got more wobbliness. Okay? <laughs> so here we have our six planks, even if we didn't taper them, or only go to go to 42 and we need 48 so what happens is we start putting wedges in and more of that in the next video show you how to do wedges and steelers okay so where you basically you've got to well steelers is really where you're dropping it down although sometimes they call wedges steelers but now we have to put little wedges in not hard i did that previously over here so it's all been done before you'll see there's a wedge and there's another one it's a tiny little one there so they sneak in. You end up with wedges in this bottom part of the hull. And that's okay. That's what happens. It's no problem. As it goes up the top, because they're so narrow, you'll have things called um, steelers, where here I've got three planks, and I had to go down to two planks. Although I didn't do as nice a job as I could have there, but we'll look at that in the next video. So we have our work cut out for us. Okay. We have our work cut out for us, and I will need to now basically measure up some planks and taper them before I even start wetting them, bending them, and pinning them. There's quite a bit to do, but we might save that for next time. But I've given you an idea of what's going to happen. So next time we will do those measurements properly, we'll do the table, and then you'll see me taper the planks and um, install them, and they should fit pretty spot on. If my measurement's correct, now, yeah, it's a bit of math. It's a bit of head stuff, but really it's not that difficult. And I'll show you next time, because all the seven planks here will be tapered the same. And all the seven planks here will be tapered the same. So really, all you end up doing is you take seven of your planks, you put them all together, and you've marked out one to what the taper is, put in your vise, and you plane it to that taper. Easy as that. And then you've got seven planks ready to go. Okay, all of that next time. But for now, we've at least accomplished this top, and we're prepared, and we're ready to go with the garboard plank and doing this whole lower hole. So I will show you how to do that next time. All right, that's enough for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.